What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. You know, collecting video games is my favorite hobby. I don't only enjoy collecting, I also love playing them. And I always look for a reason to replay games more than once, but it's sometimes hard to find motivation with a big backlog. Then, I thought about actual good remastered games. That's why today, we'll be looking at 6 Xbox 360 games that were remastered for Xbox One. So let's jump in and start off with a classic series and one of the very best reboots, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. The Tomb Raider reboot came out in 2013 on the Xbox 360 first, and less than a year later, we got the Definitive Edition for Xbox One, which really upped the visuals. This game is essentially Lara Croft's origin story, where she starts off as a bit naive but evolves into this tough survivor. As a huge fan of the old Tomb Raider games from the 90s, I hesitated to dive into this one because it felt different, but once I did, I realized I'd made a mistake in waiting. This game is fantastic. You get to explore a semi-open world, do classic Tomb Raiding, solve puzzles, and uncover secrets. The controls, especially the gunplay, is way better than previous titles. The stealth was also a welcome addition. Plus. The platforming feels super satisfying now. It's a great reboot of a series that only got better from here. So let's go back and check the physical versions. And as for collecting stuff, the Definitive Edition has some extra outfits, weapons, and even a new tomb. But there aren't any story expansions here. They included the multiplayer from the 360 version, but honestly, I'm not sure anyone still played it. It still seemed like an unnecessary addition to the game. So if you're looking to grab these, the Xbox 360 version usually goes for around $5 to $10, while the Definitive Edition is about $10 to $20. And it might be a good idea to pick that one up because the Xbox 360 version is not backwards compatible, but as a collector, I would still recommend that you pick up both of them. Next game is easily one of my favorite open world games and most deserving of a sequel that we'll probably never get, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. Sleeping Dogs is an open world action adventure set in Hong Kong where you play as Wei Shen, an undercover cop trying to take down a triad gang called the Sun On Yi. It's packed with moral dilemmas, intense combat, and a really gripping story filled with betrayal and loyalty. And some of my favorite things to do in this game involve karaoke, martial arts fighting, and even car chases with some cool slow motion shooting. Plus, there are plenty of food stalls to grab health boots after those big fights you've gone through. And you gotta love my favorite character right here. A man who never eats pork buns is never a whole man. With a strong story and memorable characters, this is still, to this day, one of my favorite open world games and is so deserving of a sequel. It kind of makes me sad every time I say it. So let's check out the physical versions of this game. So originally released in 2012 on the Xbox 360, the Definitive Edition followed soon after in 2014. So in the Definitive Edition, you get these two story DLCs as part of the complete package. And they're highly recommended checking out. First one is Nightmare in North Point. This one's a supernatural horror mission where you fight undead foes. Very different from the main game and super fun. And the second one is Year of the Snake. Here you're trying to stop a cult during the Lunar New Year, focusing on more traditional cop stuff. So for the pricing, it is actually very similar to Tomb Raider, with the Xbox 360 version around $5 to $10, and the Definitive Edition goes for about $10 to $20. So again, the Xbox 360 version is not backwards compatible here either, so it might be worth getting the Definitive Edition so you can get your hands on that DLC. And here's a game I did not expect to like as much as I did by the time I finished it, and that game is Darksiders War Mastered Edition. In Darksiders, you play as War, 
one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse who's been falsely accused of kicking off Armageddon. The game mixes action, puzzles, and exploration with some satisfying hack and slash combat. In this semi-open world game, get ready for some epic boss fights. Darksiders is often compared to be a mix of Zelda and God of War. You got those puzzle solving and exploration vibes like in Zelda, and the combat feels a lot like God of War with its hack and slash action and epic boss fights. Plus, the dark, apocalyptic setting really ties it all together with that strong storytelling you see in other action-adventure games. It's got a little bit of everything, so I definitely recommend it if you like those games to play this one. So let's check out the physical versions of this game. So the War Mastered Edition was released in 2016 and offers better graphics and smoother performance, so it's a nice upgrade from the Xbox 360 version, which came out six years earlier in 2010. For collectors though, it's a must-have for your Xbox One lineup. The Xbox 360 version is typically around $5 to $10, while the remaster goes for around $15 to $25. Plus, the Xbox 360 version is backwards compatible, so that's a huge bonus, and it still looks and plays great on an Xbox One or a Series X. Next up, we have a game that is considered a fan favorite by many, but one I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with, and I mostly blame achievements for that. And that game is Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered. See what they did there? Red Faction Guerrilla is an open world third-person shooter set on Mars. You play as Alec Mason, a former miner who joins the resistance to fight against the oppressive Earth Defense Force, or EDF. The game is all about environmental destruction, which it does a really great job at, letting you demolish buildings and create chaos. What stands out to me here, and is probably an iconic weapon too, is the sledgehammer, which is super fun to use, and it's really all about having a good time in this game. You can tell they spent a lot of time developing weapons that can cause the environment maximum destruction. One other thing to point out is that the achievement list for this game is much friendlier in the remastered version, hence why I said the love-hate relationship. I consider this to be a pretty decent game actually, but only if you stay away from the achievements and the 100% completion, especially on the Xbox 360 version. The game certainly managed to make it memorable one way or another. So let's go check out the physical versions of this game. So the original Red Faction Guerrilla came out in 2009 and the remaster was actually released much much later in 2018. The Xbox 360 version is usually around $5 or less so it's very cheap while the remastered edition is a bit all over the place ranging anywhere from $15 to $30. I wanted to mention that the remaster version includes all the DLC, including the story expansion, Demons of the Badlands, which is kind of like a prequel story that has a cool Mad Max vibe to it where you play as a completely different character. So since the Xbox 360 version is not backwards compatible, I would recommend actually getting the remaster in this case, but of course as a collector, I always recommend getting both because they are still relatively cheap for what you're getting. Just remember what I said about the 360 version. Next is a game and a series that needs no introduction, especially if you're an Xbox gamer. This is Gears of War Ultimate Edition. In Gears of War, you're thrown into a brutal war against the Locust Horde. The story follows Marcus Phoenix, a former soldier who is released from prison to help lead a group of survivors, including his friend Dom, and a team of COG soldiers in a desperate fight for survival. The game focuses on their battles against the Locust as they attempt to uncover the truth behind the enemy and ultimately find a way to defeat them. The Ultimate Edition to me feels more like a remake than just a simple remaster. There are updated graphics, sound, and gameplay, plus some new chapters only available on the PC version in the past. So the gameplay to me feels a lot more like Gears of War 4. And of course, there's still split-screen co-op available and online co-op for two players, making it the best way to experience the game. So let's take a look at the physical versions of this game. So as most of you probably know, the original launched all the way back in 2006, 
and the Ultimate Edition hit Xbox One in 2015. Physical price for the Xbox 360 version is around $5, and for the Ultimate Edition, you're looking at around $10. And the good news is the Xbox 360 version is backwards compatible and it looks fantastic on the Series X. So what I would recommend is to play the original first on a newer console because you get that little bit of a boost and then go play the Ultimate Edition. But either way, absolutely add both of these to your collection. And saving the best for last, one of my favorite games and series Dishonored Definitive Edition Dishonored is a stealth action game set in the plague-ridden city of Dunwall, where players assume the role of Corvo Atano, the royal bodyguard falsely accused of murdering the Empress he was sworn to protect. After being imprisoned, Corvo gains supernatural abilities from a mysterious figure known as the Outsider. Using these powers alongside traditional weapons, he seeks revenge against those who betrayed him while attempting to restore the Empress's daughter, Emily, to the throne. The game emphasizes player choice, allowing for various approaches to missions, whether through stealth, combat, or a combination of both. So let's take a look at the physical versions for Dishonored. The original launched in 2012, and the Definitive Edition came out in 2015, right before Dishonored 2 came out. So with the Definitive Edition, I wanted to highlight the DLCs that come with this because they are truly remarkable. So first we have the Knife of Dunwall. This DLC puts players in the shoes of Daud, the assassin who killed the Empress. It explores his story as he grapples with the consequences of his actions and seeks redemption. Players encounter new environments, enemies, and powers, as well as new missions that expand the lore of the game. And the second DLC is the Brigmore Witches. A direct sequel to the Knife of Dunwall, this DLC continues Daud's journey as he faces off against the Brigmore Witches, a powerful coven seeking vengeance. Players navigate new locations and confront both old and new foes, culminating in a choice-driven ending that affects Daud's fate. And lastly, we have the infamous Dunwall City Trials. This DLC focuses on challenge-based gameplay, offering a series of combat, stealth, and mobility challenges designed to test player skills. It includes new maps and scenarios, allowing for a more arcade-like experience outside of the main narrative. So prices for the Xbox 360 version are usually around $5 or less, and you will probably see this game everywhere, while the Definitive Edition goes for around 10 to 20. And sadly, this game is not backwards compatible on the Xbox 360, so the Definitive Edition offers a lot of value for what you're getting for the price. But as a collector, as I've said throughout this video, pick both of them up, they're very cheap. And the best part, you get to play this game twice for more achievements. Alright guys, that was it for this time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and give me a thumbs up if you like it, that'll let me know if I should be making more of these types of videos. And of course, as always, we appreciate the subscribe. And if you want to see more Xbox 360 related videos, check out this video I made about DLCs on disc. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.